This is Spinnaker back with another amazing Mojo showcase, this time taking the Node Special Connoisseur. Now, a few of you might think this is a little weird for Mojo to be able to do this. A few of you may have known that he can do this, but I still wanted to make this video because Mojo is actually the reason that I was able to explore Act 7.1. So just to understand what Special Connoisseur does, if you look at the node, the attacker takes 90% reduced damage from all attacks apart from special attacks when you have an active prowess buff. And because it's in Act 7 and they were trying to make it a lot more user-friendly, there's a node that actually gives prowess buffs to mutants. But unfortunately, my mutant roster was a bit lacking. So here's my mutant roster in all its glory, and it's pretty lacking in terms of the prowess buff department and the special attack damage department. I know I do have Namor, but Namor and if you see below Apocalypse were both received after I actually explored 7.1, so I was looking at a completely different roster before then. Now, on the actual node, there's also shifting immunity, so Archangel was out of the question, and Storm Pyramid X was still a rank 3, and I honestly couldn't get enough damage out of her. So I was left leaving this path for near me last in terms of my exploration, but I realized that passive damage actually gets around Special Connoisseur. So champions like Quake, champions like Archangel's passive Neurotoxins, Void's debuff damage all get around the node. And as a matter of fact, Mojo's degeneration is also passive. So it does also get around the node. So I decided to try him out in Act 7, and the results were actually very impressive. So here I'm heading into Act 7.1.3, where the Special Connoisseur lane actually is. And I'm starting off with a completely solo Mojo team against Sentry. Now you may notice that Mojo here has class disadvantage, and Sentry is a champion that doesn't have a lot of buffs. This is also Mojo's first fight, so it's the slowest fight in the entire lane. And it still goes by relatively quickly. I mean, even without all of that, the degenerations on Mojo are what where a lot of his damage really comes from in the first place. So we can see that I'm just trying to complete my prompts. I'm playing a little differently as you do with Mojo just to get the prompts completed because until I start, un until I get to actually my five subscribers, that's when the big damage starts because then I can start placing hater buffs on Sentry. My level two special will get a lot more degenerations on it. And I get the big anti life field fury that boosts my damage to about three times its original. So another thing that's worth noting is that in a fight like this, where you really want as many degenerations as possible, I am trying to avoid throwing the special three as much as I possibly can. So this involves I have to really manage the buffs on sentry so that mystic dispersion doesn't put me to a level three. And I also have to manage the power gain from completing prompts. So you'll notice that a few times during this fight, I will actually shorten my combo so that I don't reach a special three. And I'll just throw my special two so that I get it out and get the five degenerations on him and still have power to quickly build up to another special two. So you notice I've already hit my big damage phase and those degenerations are taking for around 2300 every single half second. And that is a lot when you consider how long the degenerations actually last for and how quickly you're able to get them on with Mojo's incredible power gain. So you'll notice here the fight is just going to be relatively straightforward. So I'll let the video do the rest of the work.
So that fight was pretty slow. It took about four minutes, but compared to the other options I could have used on this, such as Quake or Void, just letting the debuffs tick down, it was actually a lot fast comparatively. And now we're going to be entering a fight where we don't have class disadvantage and Black Panther Civil War has a lot of buffs. You'll notice that my damage is so low that I'm barely even giving him any reflective charges. But once Black Panther enters his armor up phase and I have my anti-life field open, it gets a lot more fun. So right now I'm trying to complete my prompt before I hit into Black Panther. So that way I can trigger his armor ups with my life field active so that they're a lot shorter and they convert into degens. So this will allow me to enter a lot more damage much quicker compared to the fight against Sentry. And this fight, I've already entered my a uh, big fury phase at five subscribers. So the damage can really just start going as high as it possibly can. So you'll notice that the regen is helping top me up nicely because I did take a lot of block damage to the sentry. And honestly, this is this is the last fight I'm gonna show on this path because this, this path is relatively straightforward with Mojo. I mean, I've, I've shown you a buffless match and a match with buffs, so they, he gets around both kinds quickly. Here, I had too many buffs that pushed me up to a special three. And that's unfortunate because I wanted to avoid throwing that as much as possible so I could get the maximum amount of degenerations on the special two. But unfortunately, that was not the case. You'll notice that here I get knocked down champion. And right now, he's not playing ball. So I just let him knock me down since this is the last fight I'm going to be doing. And I know that it won't kill me because Mojo has a very large health pool. So after that, it's just a question of taking him down with all of the degenerations, and I'll turn it back to the video. Enjoy. And with this special two, Black Panther will go down and that's the end of this fight. So if you enjoyed this, please let me know in the comments if you want to see anything more like this. Like and subscribe as well because I will be coming out with a lot more content relating to Mojo. Catch you later.